Okay. All right, let's get started then. Um, good evening. This is the regular meeting of the New Canaan Planning and Zoning Commission for October 26, 2021. My name is Krista Nielsen. John Goodwin, our chairman, is unable to attend this evening, and so I'm sitting in in his role. Um, the, e the meeting tonight is fully remote uh, due to inclement weather, and Lynn Brooks Abney, our town planner, will be managing the Zoom meeting. Um, Lynn, would you like to explain to everyone how this will work? Um, sure. Um, tonight's meeting is fully remote. It was planned to be a hybrid meeting, so um, you know, and it, it's all remote due to the inclement weather. So, um, if you, we will open the meeting like usual to both uh, to anyone on Zoom who has anything to say when we get to each public um, hearing item. So, just raise your hand at that time. And tonight, um, Ms. Ms. Chairman, I would suggest that we leave all the public hearing items open and carry them over because our decision due to inclement weather um, came late in the day and it was less than 24 hours before. So um, that, that would be the recommendation. Okay, sounds good. Um, so when we get to the point in the meeting where we're taking any public comment, please raise your virtual hand, or if you don't know how to do that, raise your actual hand, and Lynn will manage um, calling you out and, and letting you know when it's your turn to speak. Um, okay, so we'll do the roll call. Uh, John Goodwin is not here. John Chris? Present. Dan Radman, also not here. Claire Tiscornia? Here. Kent Turner? Here. Dick Ward? Here. Phil Williams? Here. Arthur Cassavant? All right, you're on mute. My mistake? Here. <laughs> uh, Chris Herring is also absent. James Bosch? Here. And Krista Nielsen here. Um, for those of you in the audience who are attending for 8 Ferris Hill Road, this application is not being opened this evening, um, just so you don't wait around for it. Um, so before we get to the public hearing, we did have a request from some of the commissioners to discuss um, the ribbon cutting at, at Canaan Parish today. Um, and that request came from Mr. Chris. So I'll, I'll turn it over to you since I was unable to make it due to the inclement weather. Thank you. Um... I had the uh, privilege to attend the ribbon cutting uh, today for the uh, phase one project at uh, Kinnan Parish. As you may know, it's the uh, subsidized housing, which is at Lakeview and Route 123, uh, right by the transfer station and also next to the um, Mill Pond and also uh, the Avalon property. Um, this uh, 60 unit uh, is going to replace the 60 units that are already there. And it's uh, about a four story building and uh, it was just a spectacular building. Uh, you go into these apartments, they're just lovely, uh, wonderful appliances, um, and stone counters, uh, nice cabinets. The public areas are very nice. There's a, a common or community room in the, in the building, which has full Wi-Fi so that students can use it for, children can use it for um, studying and so forth. And, and really, it's just a spectacular place to live. And I, I, I know um, this commission uh, approved this building, so um, I think uh, kudos there. Uh, and also, uh, this commission back in 2004 originally suggested to the town uh, council, which has to rule on this, to have a um, construction fee uh, uh, assessed with that money being used to support um, uh, uh, low-income housing um, or subsidized housing. And one of the challenges in subsidized housing is you need initial capital, and this has been uh, really a boon to, to that. And so this particular building wouldn't have happened without that initiative from the Planning and Zoning Commission. What's happening next is there's there was also a uh, groundbreaking for phase two. Phase two will be a 40 unit uh, building similar to the, to the one that's already up that will be occupied very soon. 
and uh, that will expand from 60 to 40 the number of units in this uh, particular development. So I see this is a, really just a lovely place to live and uh, really a boon for the town. And I uh, wanted to pass that information along to members of the commission because I know many of the people on the commission uh, were involved in the decision to uh, allow this project to go forward. So it, uh, you can go see it for yourself, but it's really just lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chris. Um, any other commissioners wish to speak on that topic? All right, uh, then we will get started with the public hearing. Um, so Lynn, just so I'm clear, James Bash is the only alternate. Does it matter which um, commissioner I seat him for? No, it's not. You okay. could seat him for John or Dan. All right, um, so Mr. Bash, you'll be seated for John Goodwin for the duration of the meeting tonight. All right, so like I said earlier, 8 Ferris Hill is not being open tonight um, because it was not properly noticed. So Lynn, that will be pushed to the November meeting, is that correct? Yes, it will be on the November 16th meeting. Okay, so then we're gonna start with a public hearing on the Talmadge Hill Roads uh, special permit. Upon application of the town of New Canaan and Aquarian Water Company for a special permit approval of section 5.1.E.2, construction of a new water supply booster pumping station to replace the existing. Um, Tiger, are you here to speak on that with us? I you're believe on you're on mute. You're on mute, Tiger. Happens all the time. Sorry. Um, we are going to allow AECOM, the engineer for Aquarian, to present this item. OK. Uh, Thank you. My name is Gary Samara. I'm the project manager for AECOM, the engineering firm doing the work uh, for Aquarian Water Company. Um, Lynn, do you have the, uh, the, the PDFs that were sent to Lola today to show? Yeah, um, I have them. Give me a second and I'll upload them right now. So okay. you can, yes, I have okay. them. Okay, uh, while you're doing that, like I said, we're here to discuss the, the upcoming Aquarian Water Company project to replace a water booster station uh, to be located adjacent to the Talmadge Hill train station. Um, the figure you see in front of you is the, uh, is the proposed site plan that was submitted. Uh, we added a little bit of color so you can, uh, you can see what we have here. Um, so the, the gray area is the existing um, parking lot for the commuter train station. Um, the, the brownish oval area is actually the existing water booster station, which is completely buried. Um, it, is, it is known as a, as a tin can. It's, it's basically a steel underground structure that houses the pumps and the electrical equipment. Um, the, the, the can, as it is known, is showing signs of corrosion. Uh, the pumps are undersized for the current flows of the area and entering the can requires going down a, a vertical staircase, which is a confined space, which is not consistent with, with Aquarian's present operating uh, procedures. So we were asked to come up with a design for a, a station to replace this, which is what is in front of the commission right now. Um, so the parking area and the parcel immediately to the east of the parking area is owned by the town of New Canaan. Um, the existing pump station is in an easement and we worked through uh, Tiger Man and Lynn and others in the DPW staff to come up with a plan to utilize uh, a presently vacant uh, piece of land just off the east of the uh, existing parking area, which the building is shown in the, in the pale yellow. Um, so what we have is a 125 foot by 80 foot easement that would be granted to Aquarian Water Company upon completion of the pump station, the existing easement for the existing pump station would be dissolved. Um, just to explain the site plan a little bit more, like I said, the pale yellow is the building. Uh, the, the white area around it is, is the easement area. Um, the area in green is the area that would 
really that would not uh, the darker green is a detention basin the lighter green is an area that would not be disturbed and then up in the north and to the east of the site is a wetland area which we are not um, getting near and we're not even working within the buffer for that area so when we first started talking about this area one of the requests from the town was that the access to this pump station would be through the parking lot so there is no uh, plan to create a, a curb cut on Talmadge Hill Road. Um, so the driveway uh, for the pump station would actually come in through the parking area. This allows us to maintain the vegetation, um, the existing vegetation in front of the building to reduce the, vi the visibility of the building from the road. Um, it also allows us not to have it to put a curb cut on Talmadge Hill Road, which is a, a steep road on a curve. And there was concerns about, um, about the sight lines coming off of that. Um, we were all, like I said, we're also asked to stay away from the wetlands, which we have done. We have no work inside of the 50 foot buffer. Um, the dark area, which I mentioned is a detention area so that we are not increasing the rate of runoff from the site. And we we're also asked to not have any chain link fence. So we're only we're proposing a architectural uh, fence to be surround to surround the building um, just to give it some separation and some security. Um, if you could move into the floor plan, the next sheet. Um, oop, is there a floor plan before that? There we go. Um, the building itself will have three distinct areas, the largest one being the mechanical room, which is on the right hand side of this figure. Um, this will be this will face towards the south with the double doors opening up to the, the parking lot area. In the upper left hand corner is a dedicated electrical room for the electrical equipment. And in the lower left hand corner is a, a generator room. Um, early on in the design, we had proposed to have an outdoor uh, emergency generator, and it was requested that the generator be put inside of the building for aesthetics and also for, for sound control. Um, so the generator room we situated in the northwest corner of the site with the louvers facing the parking lot and then the louver, uh, one louver facing, um, really it goes back to, uh, to the Merritt Parkway. Um, that way we're, we're, you know, we, we keep the visibility of the louvers away from the road and away from the neighbors. Um, if you want to go down to the next plans, we have some, some elevations and what the building will look like on the outside. Um, we're proposing a structure that is intended to look like a New England barn. Um, it will you know, it will not have a lot of visibility from the road because we are maintaining a vegetated buffer there, but we do have a, a canopy above the front door. We have some architectural treatments. It will be a masonry block building, but we are putting a um, an architectural clad siding on top of it um, to give it a to give it a wood look. Um, the town staff had asked that we put in windows with shutters. We added a, a cupola and a weather vane again for, for architectural and aesthetic treatments. Um, we do have uh, foundation plantings to be put around the building. Um, and then if you go down to the last figure, we do have a, uh, a, a colorized rendering that shows um, what the building is intended to look like. I've got a one more, yeah. So that is the, um, the elevation of the building that would be from Talmadge Hill Road. So we have a, a light colored and Arctic white siding with a darker um, asphalt shingle, uh, dark green shutters and a brown and a red brown uh, front door and, and, and hardware. Um, for lighting on the building, we really only have lights at the doorways for egress in and out of the building. Those are dark sky compliant uh, programmable fixtures that'll really only be entered um, if aquarium staff need to go to the building. This is a unmanned building, so it will not have um, regular occupation. Um, 
my estimation is that maintenance staff may come to the site once or twice a week, um, unless there were there is uh, you know an, a, a maintenance or an emergency condition. Um, the schedule for the project is we are hoping to start construction in the spring of 2020 with an estimated duration of approximately 18 months. And that's really soup to nuts in order to build the building, get the equipment and get the station online. That concludes the formal presentation and I'll open it up to any questions. Bill Dwinnells from Aquarian Water Company is also online. So if there are other questions that I'm not able to answer, uh, hopefully, uh, Bill or I can answer anything that you would have. Okay. Have a... Go ahead. Well, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just asking if anyone had questions. So, Mr. Turner, uh, go ahead. I do. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, could you uh, go back to your site plan? Sure. Give um, me a second. I'm sorry? Give me a second to bring it up. Stop okay. sharing. Um, my question is on the parking. Um, are we going to lose parking spaces number one and <clears throat> by locating the building where you have um do we uh preclude ourselves from being able to expand the parking at Tomwich hill at a future date we we are um utilizing i believe it is two or three parking spaces uh in that southeast corner of the parking area um, even before the pandemic, this was the last area occupied for parking. Um, this is the furthest from the train station. So this is the mo most remote um, to the actual uh, train platform. Uh, this topic was discussed uh, quite a bit in, in particular with, with Tiger Man. And it was um, decided upon that you know, coming in in this area, only losing those parking spaces and then um, building to the east of the area would be the most advantageous plan. So did, did you study or um, <clears throat> have a discussion about expanding the parking in the future? And it, could it go, in fact, to the uh, east of the uh, proposed building? I know the topography gets a little steep up there. Yeah, the topography gets a little bit steep, but there's also um, there's also a wetland area over there. Um, so expanding the parking to the east is really is is kind of limited by how far you could go with the wetland. Um, you know, you know the the area, like I said, to the northeast it is a wetland area, so you can only go so far. Mm -hmm. And okay, thank you. My next question is on uh, sustainability. Um, you know, I, I realize these are uh, preliminary design drawings, but I didn't see any uh, rating on the walls. Uh, you know, what what is the enclosure as far as uh, energy saving? Um, <clears throat> the windows are they high performance windows? Uh, what uh, what what thought went into sustainability? It, you know, to me, this seems like uh, you've clad a uh, you know basic barn. Uh, utilitarian type building and trying to make it look like a barn, but um, was there given any thought to uh, going a little further and, and making it more sustainable, more envir environmentally friendly? And um, was there any thought given to maybe uh, <clears throat> putting this thing down a bit in, into the earth so that it isn't so, you know, tall? Uh Actually, a portion of the building is below grade. So the water pipes do enter below grade. Um, and then the pipes actually turn up to come up into the pumps. The pumps are intentionally on the ground level so they could be accessed and removed if, if needed. Um, as far as the building, I mean, it is, it is a masonry building insulated um, in between the masonry and the siding. Um, the windows are actually faux windows. So they're gonna look like windows from the outside, but they're actually four inch masonry block on the inside. Um, so we don't really, like the energy efficiency of the windows does not really come into play. Uh, the roof of the building has R38 uh, insulation. So, I mean, this is an insulated building. It is a utilitarian building. Um, this is not, an office space. We do not need to keep it at, you know, 65 degrees. Um, typically pump stations, the thermostat is set at 
85 degrees in the summertime. Um, and they could, you know, could be as low as 60 degrees in the wintertime. Um, you know, we're not trying to, uh, try, not trying to make this comfortable for people inside the building because there are no people inside the building. Okay. Um, and then finally, you mentioned something about architectural fencing. Do you have any photographs or drawings or anything that would indicate what that is? Or can you describe it? Um, yeah, we're going with, I believe it, the brand is an Ameristar. Um, I do not know offhand the, the exact model, um, but is meant to look like a, a wrought iron fence, but it is not a wrought iron fence. Um, and I mean, if that's something that, you know, that the commissioner town have a preference on, I'm sure Aquarian Water Company would be more than willing to accommodate. I mean, the, the request that came to us was, please, no chain link. And we're not proposing chain link. Right. Okay. And no stockade type fencing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much for answering my questions. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Quiz, we'll go to you next. And I just want to let everyone know that right now we're only taking questions from the commissioners. We will open it up to the public after the commissioners have their questions. So go ahead, Mr. Quiz. Thank you. Um, a couple of questions, sir. Um, are you planning or have you thought about putting solar on the roof? Uh, there are no present plans to put solar on the roof. That's something you'd be okay with? Uh, I, I mean, that's something that I could discuss with Aquarian. We do, the roof roof does slope to the east and to the west, so it's not ideal solar exposure. Um, I mean, th that's something that hasn't, hasn't really come up, but, um, you know, could be considered. Thank you. It's not, a, it's not ideal front, not ideal solar um, orientation. Okay. Also, uh, you mentioned uh, landscaping. Could you talk about any landscaping that will be removed uh, for the build, as well as any landscaping you're planning to install and the types of landscaping? Yeah, I, I mean, right now it's it's a lightly vegetated area. Um, the, the drawings that, that we submitted, you know, the surveyor did show any, any tree, I believe it was above 10 inches in caliper. Um, it's not a it's not a densely wooded area right now along the road. There's a mix of of some smaller deciduous trees and some also some pine trees, and the idea with coming in through the parking lot is that those areas, you know, that tree that screening would not be disturbed. That we would be building um, behind that. Um, as far as foundation plantings, um, we have a, a mix of of some junipers and some bayberries, which would be put up against the foundation. Um, we don't have, I mean, this is not a very large site to begin with, so we really just have a sidewalk that um, is meant as an egress sidewalk around to get around to the back of the building, so we have a foundation planting in between that. Bayberries are uh, sort of native kind of wetlandish plants uh, to New England. Are the juniper is also going to be uh, local plants or exotics from another continent. Okay, um, is, is that something that you would like to see alternative species proposed? Well, the um, uh, plant of conservation development um, strongly suggests that native plants would be preferable. And so uh, native would be not necessarily native to North America, but native to our area of North America. Bayberry certainly is. Um, but the junipers, it can vary depending. So uh, native plants that are, you know, pollinator friendly uh, and wildlife friendly tend to be um, well received. Okay, I mean, I, I would, uh, I'm going to, uh, Bill, I don't know if you want to chime in, but I think yeah. that is something that we'd be more than happy to revisit. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can, um, we can work with, uh, we can work with you know the nurseries and make sure that when we put something in there you know that it's a that it's a species you know that's native to the area okay thank you those are my two questions mr bosch uh hi 
James Bash. A um, few questions. So one is um, the planner's memorandum mentions some issues with the existing pump station, including safety. Uh, can you discuss what the safety issues are? Yeah, the safety issue is primarily re um, regarding the, the egress to the station. Um, because it is totally below ground, uh, you basically have hatch doors that open up and a vertical ladder that goes in and out of the station. So the safety is not so much um, for the surrounding area. The, the, the safety is for the operators getting in and out of that, that underground vault, so to speak. Okay. Um, how many parking spaces are going to be lost? Uh, I two. Out of a total number of, of parking spaces of, of what, do you know? Oh, I, I, I don't know that offhand. Um, Tiger, do you it, know? It's, it's significant. I don't know it offhand, but there's at least seven lots. This is the least uh, used out of all of them. Okay. <clears throat> And then um, the existing pump station has limited hydraulic capacity. This will have, this new station will have more hydraulic capacity. Can you explain to a layman like myself what impact that will have on residents, how that will be, how that will be beneficial for residents? Well, I mean, right now the existing pump station has uh, three pumps in it. Uh, pump number one, pump number two, and pump number three. Um, and the, as, the big, as the numbers get bigger, the pump capacity gets higher. And right now during the summertime, pumps one and two cannot, they, they, operating them doesn't provide any function. So pump number three is solely used in order to provide the capacity for the station. The new pump station will have three equally sized pumps and any one of those three pumps will be able to provide the capacity that's expected for the, um, for the service area. Okay. All right. And um, how wide is that service area? Just could, can you give me a sense? Yeah, I mean, th this tank uh, pumps up to the Mansfield. Uh, I mean, the, I'm sorry, this pump station pumps up to the Mansfield tank. Um, in Darien, and the service area goes uh, all the way down through the high school in Darien and parts of other parts of Darien. How about in terms of its impact on New Canaan? Uh, there's very little service area in New Canaan. Uh, most of this water travels uh, towards Darien because it, it is it's at a higher elevation than um, than Hoyt Street. Okay. All right, so in terms of the timing of this, um, what's the reason for doing this right now? Well, I think this is a project that's been on the books for a, for a number of years. Um, and I, I mean, capital expenditure is available right now. Um, I mean, the last year and a half, uh, flow, you know, flows were very, very high last summer. Um, we had a drought condition last summer, not so much this year, but you know, with a lot of people working from home and not so much from the office, um, this area in particular saw very high flows, very high flow demands. And in, in this is actually probably more of a question for Tiger. I'm just, I'm just curious. If, since this is something that's going to be largely beneficial, it sounds like, to Darien, is this part of New Canaan's capital plan or is this more of a uh, Darien capital expenditure? This is no aquarium water company. Yeah. It's totally aquarium water's yeah. responsibility. Okay. So we have no level of subsidization of this at all? No. Okay. All right. That's it. Thank you. Okay, back to Mr. Chris. Thank you. Um, just a public safety issue. If there were a lightning strike or a fire and so forth at this facility, um, what might affects, if any, be on public safety and flood so forth? We have a major train line just downhill. If you could share any thoughts, it would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, the, light, the building itself will have lightning protection on it. I mean, that's, that's kind of standard um, for a station like this. Um, I mean, as far as, uh, I mean, the, 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 
The pump station has isolation valves. So if something went wrong inside the station, um, I mean, it, it, you know, if something catastrophic went wrong, it would be drinking water coming out of the building. Um, that's highly unlikely. But I mean, I, I, you know, this is really not any different than a, than a than a water main break, except for the fact that it's an above ground structure. Thank you. All right. Do we have any other commissioner questions before we open up to the public? Ah, Mr. Williams. Yeah, you mentioned there's going to be two spots, parking spaces lost uh, going forward. How many do you anticipate giving up during the construction process? Uh, there, there is an area shown on uh, one of the drawings that shows we're, we're looking at about six. I think it's about, is it, is it 30, Tiger? Is that about the number? Yeah. 36, yeah. yeah. In, order, in order to get the old unit out, yeah. Yeah. So 30 for the 18 months of construction you anticipate? No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be that many. Um, I mean, we're going to need a certain amount of uh, uh, parking to, to in order to build the building, mm -hmm. but then in order to come back and demolish the old structure once, um, yeah. once a new building is in service, we're going to need a separate set of parking spaces so I, I think at any one time i don't anticipate more than uh, maybe a dozen or a dozen and a half parking spaces being utilized um th those those two those two requests wouldn't be at the same time okay. except when we repave the this upper portion of the parking lot all right thank you that's all i have thank you okay any other commissioners All right, Lynn, I think we can open it up to the public. Okay, if you want to speak from the public, um, if you could just raise your virtual hand. It looks like we have a John Ritz. And uh, I do not see him on the screen, but. Uh, oh, hi. Uh, my name is John Ritz. I live at uh, 214 Talmadge Hill. This is uh, my first time speaking to, uh, to the group, and I just wanted to say thanks for all your help uh, and your dedication. I once served as a school board member, so I have a good feel for what you all are, are doing. Uh, I guess uh, some of my questions, you know, being located right across the street from this beautiful project, uh, just and you know, uh, kind of follow up on some of the other uh, comments was uh, if the town of Darien's benefiting so much from this project, and the current uh, pump station is inadequate and has safety say has safety issues, why can't uh, a location be found in Darien where uh, you know they can they can incur the benefits? Uh, of the project and uh, also, you know, have the assets uh, in, in their, in their, uh, in their town. Uh, why does it have to be in New Canaan, right across the street from my home? Yeah, I, I guess I'll explain that um, a lot of this has to do with hydraulics. So the, the water um, a lot of, I mean, all the water that comes into New Canaan and some of the water that's flowing through this pump station into Darien comes down what's called the Southwest Regional Pipe, uh, Pipeline. So the water um, in that pipeline all starts out in Wilden, uh, Wilton up at the Belden Hill tanks. And it flows by gravity and it can only get so far. In order to keep that water flowing, it, it needs these pumps. So the pumps need to be located at, a, at an elevation uh, where there is still, the, the pipe is still wet. There's still um, water available on the suction side. And so this is kind of the ideal location. I mean, this is, this is where the other pump station is located. Um, so the, you know, the supply mains are already here and having them at or about the same elevation of the existing station is really is really crucial. Um, if we went too much further up the hill, 
we would be sucking the water out and we, we wouldn't be able to, to move it with the pump station. So it, it, it's primarily a matter of hydraulics and siting it along a specific elevation. So there's no other optimal location based upon uh, the, the work from Aquarian and Eversource. Well, I, I would say that this is probably the optimal location, which is why it's being proposed. I guess my, my second question is, why is the, why is the facility so large? Uh, it, it, it almost looks comical relative to the size of the underground station. And I might have missed the, uh, the square feet of the new station, but the easement is uh, 125 feet by 80 feet. It's, I mean, just at a, at a kind of a glance, it looks like the new facility is going to be 70 feet by 30 feet. It, it's, it's a really massive building. And it's, there's no, there was no reference to uh, how tall the building is. And wouldn't you think that the height of that building, is, it's going to stand out on Talmadge Hill when you drive by it? Because you're, you're going to have to clean out a lot of trees and a lot of vegetation. And it's going to take 18 months to put that in. You can't tell me <laughs> that that's not going to have a big impact on the sight lines when you're driving down Talmadge Hill. So can you help me understand, number one, why is the building so big? And then what is the size of the building? Mr. Ritz, okay. um, this is Chairman, or standing in for Chairman Goodwin, Kristen Nielsen. Um, we're going to let you ask your questions, and then we'll let the applicant come back and answer all the questions from the public, because this back and forth ends up taking a lot more time. So we will make sure that we ask those questions of the applicant. Do you have any other questions before we, we move on? Yeah, I, I have a question as to uh, what is the noise level that will be emitted from the building from the generators inside of the building after construction? How will it be monitored and how will it be measured? Okay. My next question is, what are the hours of operation for construction? What are the noise levels that are permitted during the hours of operation? And if you know, I experience issues, who do I contact to raise the issues to? Okay. All right. Well, we've got those down. And uh, we'll I, I have a few other questions too, please. All right, let's hear them all. Well, will Aquarian be using subcontractors or will these be employees of Aquarian? And what's their experience in building these projects? Okay. I have another question. How will uh, the construction and maintenance crews access the building when it's in operations? For example, what if a pump breaks? Will there be a permanent road or gravel road that leads from the parking lot into the building? And if there is, a, and if there is an access road, will it be fenced off? Okay, anything else? Yeah, I just wanna make sure I understand uh, where the noise from the generators will be emitted relative to uh, my property. Uh, I was having a hard time viewing the, uh, the construction plans to understand if all of the noise is gonna be baffled towards the Merritt Parkway, or if, or if there's going to be noise, uh, say for example, in the event that you have to have one of these generators kick on, am, am I going to incur all the noise? 
you know, from from a from a standby generator. I'm I'm assuming it's a rather large generator and not something that's uh, like a whisper. And then the final question I have is: Was there any consideration to moving and locating this building further north towards the Merritt Parkway, as opposed to across the street from my home? Why wouldn't you want to move that building up? closer to the north end of the property. So it's closer to the wetlands and farther from Talmadge Hill Road. Thank you very much. And I'd like to know how uh, you'll follow up with me on these questions. Will this be in, in written form or will it be, will it come tonight? I just appreciate knowing that. Uh, Mr. Ritz, we will ask the applicant to answer as many of these as they can tonight. As Ms. Avney uh, indicated at the beginning, this, this public hearing will be kept open because of the short notice to, to do it as a Zoom meeting. So um, any answers you don't get tonight can be continued into the next meeting in, in November. Okay, thanks. Thank you again. I really appreciate it. Okay. Lynn, is there anyone else from the public before we turn it back over to the applicant? Lynn, you're on mute. Sorry, I had a kid in the room. Um, anyone from the public who would like to speak, please raise your virtual hand. It does not look like there is anyone else from the public who wishes to speak, so. Okay. Uh, then we'll go back to uh, Mr. Samard. Would you like to answer some of the questions posed by the public, or do you want to come back next weekend with, or next month with some answers? Oh, oh no, I'll, I'll I'll answer as many as I can. Um, okay. I did I did take some notes, so I am going to uh, go back through my notes and um, hopefully address all of them. Um, the The size of the building is thirty by sixty seven. Um, the building is sized in order to house the three pumps have a separate electrical room and a separate generator room. Having the generator inside the building did obviously make the footprint of the building um, slightly larger than was originally intended. But the benefit is that the generator is inside the building and not in a, in a separate structure. Um, as far as noise, um, the, the pumps themselves um, do not make much noise. And in my experience, when doors are closed, there is no sound outside the building from the pumps. Um, the emergency generator will only run for emergencies. So if there is an area-wide power outage, the generator would be on. As I mentioned before, the generator room was strategically placed in the northwest corner of the building with the exhaust louver to the north facing the Merritt Parkway. So the noise would be, um, although we did use acoustical louvers to dampen the amount of noise coming through the louvers, um, the noise was uh, intended to be faced to the north so it would not face any, any adjacent neighbors. Um, as far as the hours of construction, typical hours of construction, are seven or three thirty. It's typically an eight-hour day, Monday to Friday. Uh, weekend work is is pretty rare. Um, it, it, it's sometimes requested because of specific scheduling or because of loss of uh, of work days during the week during inclement weather. Um, Sunday work. I've never I've never had a project with a Korean where where they've authorized Sunday work. Um, same with holidays, That's, that just doesn't really happen very much. Um, noise during construction, yes, this is a construction project and yes, there would be noise. However, you know, noise would be limited to the daytime hours when it is permitted uh, by, you know, town zoning regulations. Uh, there was a question about, you know, subcontractors and employees. Um, this project would be built by a, uh, a qualified contractor to Aquarian. Aquarian only allows um, pre-qualified contractors to even bid on their projects. So a, a, con a contractor that would be hired for this project would be a, a known entity to Aquarian that they've worked with in the past. Um, 
how would, let's see, how would the maintenance be accessed? So this building would only be accessed from the existing Talmadge Hill train station parking lot. There is no driveway proposed to come directly off of Talmadge Hill. Um, there is no intention to put a driveway directly across Talmadge Hill. Um, that was an intentional thing. Um, as far as moving the building further to the north, um, I, I guess the counter to that would be the further we move the building to the north, the closer it gets to the wetland and to, to the intermittent stream course. So it, it was kind of a balance between how far could we get away from the road to how far could we get to the wetland or the water course area. Um, those are the notes I took. I did. I, if I missed any questions, it was not intentional. And um, the only one I go back. see is did um, the height of the, the building. Okay, so the, so the height of the building is is basically dictated by uh, you will have the pump inside the building, and if the pump needs to be maintained, it needs to be lift up, carried possibly over another pump and put back down. So you have the height of the pump, and then you have a, another height above the pump in order to carry one pump over another pump. You have a basically a monorail inside the building that picks it up. And then obviously, because this is a, a you know, a gabled building, there, there, you know, there's a height element to that, but we are in, in no, main, no means close to um, the maximum height allowed by a building in this zone. Okay. It looks like Mr. Ward has a question. Yeah, quick question. Uh, what size generator is it? And would the generator have to be run weekly for 10 or 15 minutes, as I think is standard with many home generators? Yeah, th this is a, a, a 200 kilowatt generator. Um, my experience with Aquarian is they, they don't they don't do a routine exercise of the generator when the generator is known to be in good working condition. Um, so that's not something that you typically see done. Um, Bill, I'm not sure if you know offhand whether or not they exercise the, the existing generator at the pump station now. Um, I'm not no, aware that they do. Yeah, I'm not I'm not. Uh, sure of uh, how often they run the generators or if they do exercise them, you know, I would, yeah. I would, I would be confident in saying that, you know, when they come to do the annual maintenance, that is going to be part of it. Right. You know, um, when the maintenance, when the generator company comes, you know, one of the things they're going to do is they are going to start it up, you know, and, uh, and make sure everything's running right. But, but, but typically they're not exercised on a weekly basis as uh, Mr. Ward mentioned is, is common with a lot no, of- No, not on a weekly basis, no. Um, okay. Mr. Chris, do you have a question? Yes, thank you. On the generator, I forgot to ask this earlier, is this going to be propane or um, diesel? This this is diesel. There is no there is no natural gas of, available in the service area. The the only natural gas is on the other side of of the railroad tracks um, down on Hoyt Street. Um, so not wanting to um, have to deal with you know propane storage for a, a 200 kilowatt generator. This is a this is what's called a belly tank. So it's a double wall. Um, tank that sits underneath the generator in the same, you know, in the same room. The generator sits on top of the tank and the tank is, is filled from the outside. I would assume that this uh, generator and its tank would be, uh, would have the blessing of the fire marshal. Oh yeah. I mean, oh, we need a building permit here. And the, oh yeah, that's, that's definitely part of the deal. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Bash. Yeah, I, just, I wanted to follow up on the easement agreement between New Canaan and uh, Darian, uh, following on the gentleman's question, Mr. Ritz's questions before. Um, does the easement allow the possibility that this new pumping station would be located in Darien instead of New Canaan? So in other words, is, is this Aquarian's discretion as to where to put it? Uh, I, I guess this was... Aquarian's request and the location was um, 
a, a subject of, of several meetings between Aquarian AECOM and, and DPW staff. Um, because the, the issue I'm having, and I don't know if there's any, I'm glad Mr. Ritz was able to join us and ask those, those very valid questions. I don't know if it would potentially um, affect other residents in New Canaan in, in a similar way as this construction and ongoing operations might affect Ritz, Mr. Ritz. Can you give us a sense of that? Uh, during construction? either during construction or ongoing operations thereafter is Mr. Yeah. The most likely to be the most affected or others are as well. No, I mean, obviously any neighbors in closer proximity would, would, would be the most uh, impacted. Uh, I'm not sure if, if Mr. Ritz um, is even aware that there is a pump station uh, in between the, the parking lots of the train station. I mean, it's not, it's not easy to see. It's not something that you would know unless you knew exactly what you're looking for. Um, I mean, there's, there's, there are only a couple of properties uh, across the street from this site. I mean, directly to the east is a, is a, you know, is the rest of the parcel, which I believe is about seven acres in size. Um, so there, there are not a lot of, of direct properties that abut this parcel. Okay. Directly to the north is the Martin is the Mara Parkway, and the train station is to the west. Understood. And, and I appreciate what you said before in terms of um, this is the ideal location in terms of hydraulic elevations. And I, from a layman's perspective, I'm just just going to go with that. He's certainly much more knowledgeable than I am that that this is a the ideal location from Aquarian's perspective. The the quandary I'm facing in thinking about this is that's nice. Um, but is should this really be New Canaan's issue, especially if there are residents like Mr. Ritz that um, you know that potentially have issues with this? So why should this not be uh, Darien's issue? Um, and what level of discretion do does this commission have? Does New Canaan, the town, have to kind of compel Aquarian if we? if one wishes to do that, to locate it in Darien as opposed to New Canaan, since they are the principal beneficiary, or it sounds like overwhelmingly the beneficiary at this new pumping station. Well, I guess what I would offer to that is, I mean, Aquarian Water Company is basically the water company for all of Fairfield County with the exception of Norwalk. Water crosses town lines everywhere. I mean, that's how this entire system is built. So it, it's very common that there are facilities in one town that serve another town. I mean, the water that goes to New Canaan, you know, a lot of it starts out in Fairfield and then it goes all the way um, through Wilton by the Belden Hill tanks and then down into New Canaan. Some of it continues all the way down into Stamford. It's a regional water system, and it's really based on where, you know, what's the best best way to build this system to serve the community, not just any one town. Okay, thank you. Okay, I see that Mr. Ritz has his hand up again. Um, Mr. Ritz, I'm going to ask you if you could give additional questions you have based on what you've heard tonight to the town planner. And um, we will have this still open, public hearing open for the next meeting. Um, so we can have Aquarian address any of the questions you continue to have at that time. Is that- Yeah, I, I just have one, one, one comment. Um, and uh, first, thank you. Um, I guess stepping back and looking at this, uh, Aquarian's owned by Eversource. Eversource is a utility, they provide electric, they, they provide natural gas. A number of us wanted to have natural gas services uh, installed along Talmadge Hill Road, uh, just for the benefits of a reduced carbon footprint. It's a much more sustainable uh, source of power. And here we are having uh, Aquarian and Eversource erecting this massive building. It's gonna be diesel powered through backup generators this whole thing just doesn't make a bit of sense. And you all went ahead and paved Talmadge Hill Road uh, just two years ago. And that, that just put a wrench 
and any plans to have natural gas hookups into, uh, into Talmadge in this area. So I guess I'm just kind of vexed at the uh, lack of forward planning by Eversource. And I, I just think this whole project is a boondoggle and it should be located somewhere other than New Canaan. Uh, I'm stuck in the, in, in the corner of Darien and New Canaan. I can tell you how many times in the last 11 years I've lived here where Eversource doesn't even have a record of my power being out. And it's, it's, just, it's just poor management. And with that, I will, I'll stop my comments. Uh, I'm, I'm really against this project. And you still haven't answered how tall the building's gonna be. I understand it's gonna be in zoning compliance and stuff like that. But if you can't even tell me how tall the building's gonna be, I just have a real concern with the project. Thank you very much. And uh, I will submit additional questions to whoever I need to, and I appreciate all your help. Thank you, Mr. Ritz. Um, Mr. Chris, it looks like you have another question before we move on. The question is uh, about a uh, request to um, the applicant regarding some of the points I made before. Uh, when we reconvene in a month, I would find it helpful if a detailed landscaping plan could be presented to the commission, which would indicate the number uh, and common name and Latin name of any plants you intend to install and what size plants and where they would be planted uh, on the site. So we can have a, a full discussion of what those plans are. And second, uh, regarding the solar issue, uh, I'm sure there are competent people at uh, Aquarian or uh, contractors you have who can look at this particular uh, building and its siting and its orientation to the sun and um, provide some input on whether solar is, you know, makes a lot of sense, doesn't make much sense, or whether it's a coin toss, so that we can have that information available for the commission. Thank you. I would find that helpful anyway. So let me put it that way. Thank you. Thank you. Any other commissioners with requests for next month? Okay. Then let's continue moving. Item three on the public hearing agenda is um, the text amendment to the zoning regulations regarding prohibition of cannabis establishments. Um, Lynn, I'll let you lead that conversation. And you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Nicholas Bamonte from the town attorney's office is here. And um, I will actually just, um, share it on the screen so we can all see the uh, proposed at the same time. Just give me one second to bring it up. Okay, um, so uh, last time we had a, a draft that um, had a temporary prohibition. You guys, as you guys, I mean, the commission re um, represented last month that you wanted a permanent prohibition. We edited the, uh, the draft legislation to actually locate where we would fit it into the current zoning regulations, we added some defined terms, um, namely cannabis and cannabis establishment, um, took out some de currently defined terms that are in the regs, uh, medical marijuana dispensary, medical marijuana production facility. And then um, we added into section 4.1, which is where the current um, prohibitions on marijuana are located. And we, we, we show what we added with an intent and purpose and what the prohibition is. And we deleted the existing language for medical marijuana dispensaries and medical marijuana production facilities. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we have asked uh, Nick Bamonte from the, town, from the town attorney's office to attend tonight um, to answer any questions that the commission may have and then um, hear from the public. 
Questions, commissioners? Mr. Chris? Yeah, um, really a question, but um, uh, I uh, would uh, support this prohibition. Um, uh, my, my concern, uh, one of my concerns is, um, you know, the possibility of, um, uh, you know, secondhand smoke affecting people in public areas and how that could affect safety and public health. I, I've mentioned, I believe, uh, previous times where someone is um, maybe smoking as opposed to using an edible and you get a contact high and you're driving with your kids and you may not want to drive home. Um, but I, I, I think uh, for uh, the safety and welfare of the people in New Canaan, um, I would be very sympathetic to um, uh, su supporting this, uh, this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Any other commissioners with questions or comments? Okay, Lynn, do we have anyone from the public that wants to speak? Does anyone from the public want, um, wish to speak? Um, Scott Chason. Yes, hi, good evening. Um, I apologize, but I did not uh, have the, the document in front of me to read through, but I was curious as to why it's defined, uh, why you define it as cannabis um, and, then, and then clarify further saying marijuana. Um, knowing that uh, CBD is technically bundled in as a cannabis product, and we already have a storefront located in the town that technically could be considered a cannabis storefront. So I'm just wondering if that might cause issues further down the road. Nick, do you want to um, answer that question? Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. I mean, I, I can, as we go to other members of the public, I can take a closer look at how the statutes define uh, marijuana. And if it does have a carve out for CBD, I, I frankly, off the top of my head, I'm not sure if the new um, legislation that came through the state made that sort of a carve out. I know there's hemp is completely separate and distinct, but uh, Mr. Chasen may be correct that CBD type products would fall under the definition of um, marijuana and cannabis, which is being prohibited here. But keep in mind, everyone, what's actually being prohibited under this um, text change is cannabis establishments. And there's those 11 categories of cannabis establishment, which are expressly um, defined business types that need to go through a specific type of licensure process with the state. So we're not prohibiting cannabis because we can't. That's actually against the law for us to prohibit cannabis. Um, mm -hmm. So now that I'm, I'm thinking about it, I don't think that a CBD business in town would in fact run afoul of um, this prohibition. But I mean, in the meantime, I could double check the uh, definition of cannabis, but like I said, I don't think for purposes of this specific prohibition, those types of establishments are affected. And I don't, I don't see anyone else from the public who wishes to speak. If anyone else wishes to speak, could you just raise your virtual hand, please? Madam Chair, I don't think there's anyone else from the public who wishes to speak. Madam Chair, if I could just insert myself here really quick, since we are gonna be leaving this open, um, I think the CBD question is a valid one. So I'm happy to look into that between now and, and the next meeting, and then I could come back and report back um, if that's what the commission would like. That sounds great. Let's proceed that way. Okay. Okay. Um, so the next uh, application in the public hearing is 14 Skyview Lane um, upon application of Charles A. Mills, Mills Engineering, LLC, authorized agent for Paul Krikorian and Sophie Chang, owners for a special permit approval of sections 3.4.C.6 to allow construction of a new tennis court, pool house, and pool within 150 feet of a front yard. 
as the property is situated on a corner lot, the proposed pool house tennis court, uh, pool house and tennis court would be approximately 51 and 129 feet respectively from the property line fronting on Davenport Ridge Road in the two acre zone at 14 Skyview Lane. Um, this was continued from last month um, because of some neighbor concerns about flooding. Um, if the applicant is here and wants to talk about if anything was able to be resolved, let's hear from them, please. Mr. Mills, that, that's you. No, no problem. I was waiting to be introduced. Thank you, Len. So, yes, yeah, so we, we presented last week, we went over the various elements of the project. Um, as you mentioned, the neighbors had some concerns and we were asked to meet with them. Um, we did sit with them after the meeting last week and reviewed their video, which I don't know if anyone else has seen the video of the existing flooding concerns that happen on the property. And again, this is the headwaters of the Springdale Brook. Um, Currently, there's a culvert underneath the road, underneath Davenport Ridge Road. Um, and Lynn, it might be helpful if you bring up the site plan, maybe the grading sheet would make sense at this point. Okay, keep talking and I will bring it up. No problem. So, so we met with the neighbors and again, and again, they have an existing flooding issue over there where the culvert does not have capacity to pass all the flows that come through there. Um, it overtops the road and subsequently flows onto their property. And you know, it's, it's a bad situation that they're in right now. It's, it's not a good situation. Um, now we went through and we, and well, first we met with them after the meeting, like I said, um, and we showed them our plan, which from the very beginning, I, when I started the drainage work on this project, I was looking at their property and I was concerned about it. Um, I reached out to the town engineer, Maria Coplet, and both her and I, in some ways came up with this concept. I asked her where the discharge points were for the project. So long story short is that we're collecting the runoff associated with the project. We're infiltrating it into the ground, into a Coltec system. We're then bringing it and detaining it into a rain garden and discharging it. And Lynn, I'm waiting for that to come up so that it makes a little more sense. But we're, we're discharging it at the Southeast corner of our property, which is down slope of Patricia Oxman's property. Um, so even without any of the infiltration and the detention that we're proposing, we are collecting areas that would otherwise flow onto their property and diverting it away from their property and downstream. Um, so here's the existing conditions sheet. Um, go ahead, Len. That's, uh, and if you go up towards the top of the page, Len, you could see and this is what I call the rear yard. Davenport Ridge is to your left, which is to the north. The Oxmans are up there on the top of the page. And very faintly, you could see the existing septic system and all of that water currently flows towards their property. Okay, now, and Lynn, flip, flip the page to the grading sheet and let everyone see the development. And it's a proposed pool area and tennis court. The pool area is situated just below their walkout of their basement, okay? We're picking up everything in the pool area along with, there's two little pool cabanas that are shown, and we're going to pipe these along with all the water that's discharging from the rain garden, which is situated just down the slope of the tennis court, and we're going to discharge it in the top right of your screen there, which is down slope and downstream of the Oxman's property. Um, now, this is something that the town engineer, as I said, endorsed from the, the beginning. I know Patricia Oxman has reached out to Maria um, and her and I are in lockstep as to this is a good plan and it's the best way to protect the property. Now, we also met them on site to go over this and discuss potentially, now, and I should say, look, we, we, we meet the town standards for drainage and we exceed it. We actually are capturing a 50 year storm and detaining that below the current discharge levels. Um, not to mention the fact that we are diverting water, as I said, to the far uh, southeast corner of the property or the top right on your screen. Now we met the neighbors out there and we discussed potentially building a swale to divert some more of the water of the grassed area just upslope of the septic. And Lynn, if you could just point out where that is just between the pool area and the septic system in here, we were talking about doing a swale and, and diverting it 
which is a little bit to the right of your screen. Um, but effectively, we decided against that because the existing stone wall and the planted buffer we're proposing is a better way to protect their property as opposed to you know, allowing more water faster onto their property. Um, and that's, that's where we are at this point. And I, I don't think that the neighbors, I, I've spoken to them several times by phone. We've, uh, we've met out there, we've had several good discussions. I was very candid with them after the meeting and all along about you know, what their existing flooding condition is and you know, how best to try and protect their property. And that's something I know that the town and you know, DPW engineering and, and the highway department is working with them on how best to try and address their issue. Okay, commissioners, any questions? It's Kent, it's Kent Turner. I have a couple of questions. <clears throat> could, um, Lynn, could you um, pull up the uh, drawing that indicates the uh, detention tanks? <clears throat> the, uh... I will go to the, the site plan sheet, Lynn would be the best sheet. Okay. Sheet three. Yep. Yeah. So if I understand <clears throat> the drawing correctly, um, the uh, rectilinear area above the uh, tennis court is the rain garden. Correct? Yes, sir. And that, uh, <clears throat> that, that basically the design, the intent of that is to uh, uh, absorb water runoff so that it would not, in theory, uh, go on to the neighbor's property. Um, and then yep. you have five five retention tanks. They're actually quite quite large, and um, <clears throat> they're scattered throughout the site. Uh, and it looks like they would take care of the existing house, the uh, proposed pool. Uh, would also help with the tennis court. Uh, basically, you're you're doubling your imperious imper imperious area, um, so the the tanks would would be a good solution for uh, retaining that water. Um, you know, I I think it's a very robust plan, <clears throat> and my recommendation to, uh, as a commissioner would be that um, we would do a third party kind of a peer review just to you know double check some of the calculations to make sure that um, everything that, that is being proposed um, is going to you know work uh, the way it's um, uh, intended but uh, beyond that i i think that the uh, applicant has done a great job of uh, and going beyond what our codes require to uh, retain this water and in many ways it's probably going to help the situation or the flooding that, uh, that this neighbor has had over the years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Thank you, Commissioner. I, I would offer also is that uh, Maria Coplet has reviewed this plan and she's going to review it again prior, as part of the building submission process. So there will be another engineer, your own engineer, in fact, reviewing these plans and, and well, the report. We, we oftentimes like to have a third party, you know, an independent, uh, not somebody in the town, but uh, another engineer that would, um, you know, just uh, do, do the calculus on it to make sure that uh, uh, it, in fact, is going to work as we think it will. And I, I think that would give the neighbor uh, a great deal of confidence that uh, this is a good design. Okay, any other commissioners? Um, okay, then let's open it up to the public. Does, does anyone from the public wish to speak? Um, Patricia Funt Oxman. Tell her she's on mute. You're still on mute, Ms. Oxman. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yes. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm Patricia Font Doxman, 277 Davenport Ridge Road, New Canaan. Um, I just, um, I, I have to say since um, uh, I have so much uh, interest in protecting our property that the idea of a, a third party looking over the, the plans is, sounds good to me because, um, you know, personally, obviously my husband and I can't understand the best thing for our property just as lay people, it's so complicated. Um, I, I, I just wanted to say, I mean, everyone has been very cordial about it and everything, and I, I appreciate that, um, Charlie Mills and, and the neighbors, but um, I would like that very much. Thank you, Ms. Oxman. Is there anybody else from the public who'd like to speak on 14 Skyview Lane? Is there anyone else from the public? Um, Sophie Chang, did you want to speak or? No, oh, okay. I, I'm happy to, but so we're the no. owners. I don't know if we're considered the public. Um, no, I thank you very much for managing the town. <laughs> I saw your hand raised, that's why, but if you didn't want to speak. Oh, I think it's a Zoom AI, like detects hand motion. Oh, okay, that's fine. I just didn't want to leave anyone out if they wanted to speak. So it looks like that's. Actually, uh, can I speak? I'm sorry. If can I? Quick question. I guess in, in regards to the um, third party engineer, um, who pays for that? If if the commission were to determine that um, a third party engineer would be required, then um, it would be um, you that would pay for it. We we would pay for that, but why? We've, we've, we've done so much and we've gone above and beyond already what, what, you, what the, the town is requesting. And from the very beginning, we've never tried to do anything to slide you know, something in behind the ox fans. We've just been very upfront with everything that we're doing. So I'm, it just feels like a little much on us. It feels like overkill. But, but I'm saying that if, if you want it, sure. I'm just not sure if it makes sense for us to pay for it given that we've already done all of this. And we're not questioning our own work if you know you guys are questioning it so if um it's kent turner if i might uh, speak um it's very common for this commission to ask an applicant to uh, be part of a, a third party peer review process it's not um uh, done because we we don't believe or we don't trust it's simply a um, just an extra level of insurance, so to speak, that uh, what is being proposed that the design, in fact, does work. Engineering is a uh, <clears throat> a very difficult, uh, complex um, thing, and and uh, you know mistakes can be made or opinions can be different. There are different understandings about something as simple as drainage. So it's please don't feel that. Um, we don't trust or that we uh, are doing this because um, of you know any other motivation it's simply to make sure that there won't be any issues uh, <clears throat> with the design and we acknowledge that the design uh, appears to be very robust and it, this is not a ultimatum this is something that we're talking about as a commission uh, we'll decide if, if that's the prudent thing to do. Correct. Thank you. Okay, so commissioners on that note, um, Lynn, I don't know exactly how this works. I, I guess we don't have to vote on this, but we should probably talk about whether this is something we want to pursue, a third party review of the drainage plan. Can I jump in for one moment? And by the way, Lynn, I want to remind that we need to grant an extension on this, which yes, I should have the awesome. outset. Um, and I, I want to say is I appreciate what Mr. Turner is saying and that, you know, I, I understand your need to be able to protect the Oxmans considering they have an existing issue. Um, but I, I would offer is that my client has already, you know, they've, they've gone through a hot through this process to begin with something that typically wouldn't be reviewed by the commission other than the fact that it's on a corner lot, which I appreciate, um, you know, and, but this is something that's typical in this sort of setting in the neighborhood. Now, the engineering associated with this 
I look at is this is very cut and dry and very simple and something that wouldn't be contentious or need a third party review. There's plenty of instances where that is true. Um, I don't feel in any way that this is something that merits that for several reasons. One is that, as I said, I've, I've spoken to the town engineer on this and we're an absolute lockstep that even without having any detention or retention, which we are proposing on this, merely picking up the water and diverting it out of the influence of the tailwater of the culvert is something that's going to resolve the issue. And this is something that this is, it's a good plan. It's something from the very outset, I was looking at the Oxman's property and thinking how I could best protect them to get the water into the water course in an area where there's no adjacent structures and there's no lawn areas and nothing like that. Um, and once again, I respectfully submit this. I appreciate your concern for the neighbor, but I think that my client has really gone above and beyond in an effort to try and protect the neighbor. Um, okay, we'll, we'll come back to that. Mr. Mills, while you're speaking, um, let's talk about the extension. Are you, are you guys willing to give an extension to next month? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, all right, so commissioners, then it sounds like we have to give some direction here. Lynn, can you tell me exactly how this is supposed to work or is this just sort of a conversation, not a vote? So it's not a vote, it's a conversation. If the commission desires that the applicant have a third party um, engineer hired to review this um, project, um, staff would have to engage a third party engineer to review it in a very timely fashion to get back to you guys with an answer on November 16th. Um, the applicant is, is um, correct as is, the, um, as is Mr. Turner. The commission has used third party um, engineers or third party consultants and they have the right to do so. Um, typically it's been done on larger projects. Um, the, this project is here for a special permit. It, and um, it, is, um, it is here for a special permit solely because it's on a corner property. Otherwise, you guys wouldn't have seen it at all. It would have gone through under a zoning permit. So, uh, okay. Um, and I'll just add on to what Lynn said. I mean, I, uh, I'm fine with the town engineer being okay with it. I don't um, feel like we need to add an additional expense to the applicant, but I, I wanna hear what the rest of the commission has to say. Uh, Lynn, Maria's trying to sign on. If you could let her yeah. in. Oh, thank you. She got her in. Thank you. Oh, great. The town engineer to join the conversation. Do you guys want to hear from the town engineer before we have this conversation or should we share thoughts now? Okay. Hear from her. Talk to Maria and then we'll we'll circle back. Good evening, everyone. And I apologize for joining late. So just to um, recap, actually, because I was just talking to um, Tiger offline and, um, and I was just um, catching up a little bit on our last applicant and we're now on to the library, is that correct? No, we're on Skyview oh, Lake. still on Skyview? Correct. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Um, yes, yeah, so Charlie Mills and I have reviewed the original application that came in and we had our department had a couple of comments and modifications that the applicant was um, very accommodating with and came back with an option that we all felt very comfortable with. And what the nice thing is, is that we understand that since the um, submission was made that the adjacent neighbor at 27, excuse me, 277 Davenport Ridge had expressed some concerns as well. Now, what we had done is we had had the opportunity to speak again with Charlie and with the Oxmans. The nice thing is, is that where the plan for the improvements are, are in an area where it's lawn that currently goes down to their property. With the proposed improvements, that area of lawn is actually gonna be redirected away from the Oxmans property. So there's actually going to be an improvement to their property. Now, mind you, that area is going to be detained and it is going to be treated based on our policy and all the mitigation measures required by our policy will be met. Okay, commissioners, does anyone have questions for Ms. Coplett while we have her on the line? Go ahead, Mr. Chris. 
Yes, thank you. Ms. Calvin, just a couple of questions. So you're a Correct. licensed professional engineer in the state of Connecticut. Correct. And you have examined this application and the site in detail. Correct. And uh, it is your professional opinion that any water runoff issues that currently exist will be at worst the same as they are now, but in all likelihood less severe than they are now. Correct. And you see this, if I conclude that, that this is a uh, net plus for the Oxman property with the proviso that the Oxman property has some water issues that are, are not fixable by um, this particular application. Correct, yes. And we have been to the Oxman property a number of times and we are working on collectively as a town some opportunities to try to alleviate some of those concerns that the Oxmans have. Um, but those water and drainage and flooding concerns are not due to, substan not substantially due to the property of 14 Skyview. And as you mentioned, because of the improvements that are proposed at 14 Skyview, it would only improve the situations at 277 Davenport. Those are my questions, thank you. Great. Uh, Ms. Tiscorny, I see your hand up. I don't know if it's because of, if you wanna have questions for Ms. Coplet or? I don't have any questions for Ms. Coplet. I was just gonna kind of agree with you and say, I think that what the engineer has done has been <clears throat> above and beyond what the town has asked for. So I don't think we would need a third party review. Okay, Mr. Ward, I see your hand up. Yes, I, I agree with that. I, I think that the third party review, as I believe uh, Mr. Turner mentioned, is generally done when it's a fairly substantial applicant uh, rather than in sort of this kind of a personal residential situation. And I think that the comments from Mr. Mills, uh, you know, are, are clear. I think we understand it and that this, it's not necessary in this case to uh, have a third party engineer. Maybe Mr. Mann would have a view. I, I don't know whether it's fair to ask him to <laughs> opine. If not, don't, you don't it's need okay. to. I, I don't, in this case, I don't feel that third party review is necessary. I think Maria has done a fantastic job reviewing it and working with Mr. Mills on the subject property. And uh, as, she, as she noted, the, uh, it will only enhance or uh, it help the situation at Davenport Ridge. There's some other, um, mitigating factors that are uh, working against the Oxmans that have nothing to do with uh, the current applicant's property. This is John Chris. Uh, I would concur with uh, Commissioner Tiscorny. I don't see a need for a third party engineer. Um, I take comfort from the uh, applicant's engineering report. Um, Commissioner Turner has looked at it and has opined favorably that this would um, attenuate some of the water issues in the Oxman property. Again, not solve, but attenuate them. And uh, we've heard a similar comment from town's own professional engineer. Um, that's good enough for me. Okay, so it sounds like number one, we will continue this application until next month. Um, and that, uh, I mean, I didn't hear from everybody, but I, I'm hearing it seems more people saying we're okay with um, not having a, a third party review and going with what the applicants engineer and what the town engineer have agreed upon. Krista, can I ask why are we continuing this just because of the notice issue? I believe that's the reason. Lynn, you're on mute, but please tell us. Yes, that is exactly the reason. Because of the inclement weather, we um, moved this meeting to all virtual today and it was advertised as a hybrid meeting. So on the off chance that some random person wanted to show up in person, um, it leaves that opportunity open, which Thank is you. why we're, that's it. Okay. Then um, it sounds like that's the direction we'll go in. No third party review, and we will hopefully vote on this next month so that we can close it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so on to the regular meeting agenda. Item five is the 824 review of the Talmadge Hill Road project. And for those who aren't familiar, we do 824 reviews when the town is doing something with property it owns. In this case, we're leasing a, a portion of our property to Aquarian potentially for this pump station. Um, 
Tiger, are you here to speak about that or I don't know? I am. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, Tiger Man, Director of Public Works. Um, as you mentioned, uh, an 8-24 review is necessary for what they consider municipal improvements. No, you, no municipal agency or legislative body shall, uh, we're sticking with the least portion. Um, so we should not locate, relocate, substantially improve, acquire land for, abandon, sell, or lease any airport, park, playground, school, or other municipally owned property or public building until it's been reviewed by the commission. Um, so we look to the plan of conservation and development. And while we understand that um, while the pump station is in the town itself, it might not necessarily benefit all of our residents. Um, it does benefit the area at large. And if we looked at the plan of conservation and development, you have section five that says there's an enhanced livability section uh, where it's uh, promote appropriate facilities and services. And I would consider that this would be a, um, an appropriate service or facility um, that would contribute significantly to the community character, community character and quality of life. Um, necessarily, you know, improved water service would be a quality of life issue. And section six, under your achieve sustainability and resiliency, under the promote sustainability portion, we have uh, a, a portion about water conservation and improved water services or, or um, water infrastructure will actually help water conservation since um, they'll be improving the, uh, the pipelines themselves, some of the water mains also, and uh, that'll help with loss of, of water um, through the distribution system. So I kind of offer those two as far as whether or not this actually falls within the plan of conservation development. I hope you'll see the exact same um, situation. Okay, commissioners, any questions for Mr. Mann on the 824? Tiger, I have a quick question, which sure. is, we, we've in effect, if, if I understood the Aquarian proposal completely, uh, this is Commissioner Casavant, by the way, mm -hmm. for the record. Um, we're in effect going to be releasing the existing easement, creating a new easement on the property. The question that was asked earlier, I think it was by Mr. Turner, um, related to the size, or perhaps it was the neighbor, the sheer size of the easement. Does the easement need to be that big for the new property? Uh, we, yeah, there was, there's some, there needs to be some maintenance uh, room around it. Um, this was, uh, the footprint, I believe from Aquarian was initially larger and in discussions, we, we shortened it down to what, um, they felt was their standard, um, or below their standard and what they could live with at the time. Um, it's, it's similar in size to the existing, um, easement. The, the problem is that the existing easement is underground, right? So the facilities are underground. You can't even, you don't even know that they're there. So now we're looking at an above ground structure versus an underground structure, but, uh, we tried to size not only the, the the land or the easement and place it in a in an area where uh, um, we felt it would do the least harm, so to speak. And and in the transfer of that easement, who owns the or who is responsible for the maintenance of the area? For example, within the easement, is it still the town's they, responsibility? No, the Aquarian the would be responsible for maintenance of the easement area itself. So the fencing, the building, um, the landscaping, any of that, um, we are responsible for the snow plowing of the lot, but that just provides them access to it. We have similar um, situation up at Waveney, whereby we have to maintain the access road that leads up to the water towers for Aquarian um, and their facilities. Um, and then they may maintain the area itself, the fencing in the area inside the compound there. And, and, and one final question. I assume that if we, we go through a process like this frequently with respect to easements, is there anything in, and, and I don't perceive anything, but is there anything that uh, in the transfer of this easement that anyone would look at and say is particularly overly advantageous to Aquarian or is just a normal co course of business easement transfer? This is a normal course of action easement um, for Aquarian itself. The, uh, the infrastructure is there already. That, that's one of the constraints of the project that um, the engineer necessarily speak to was the fact that 
um, while we tried to move it a little bit further away in certain areas that the, uh, the infrastructure is already there and became problematic for them to move that structure anywhere further along the system itself. Um, so that was one of the constraints. It's not like it's a, it's a new installation. It's just a replacement thereof. Um, but there's nothing, there's nothing unduly advantageous to Aquarian other than the fact that they'll be able to continue to provide water service to the surrounding area. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Other commissioners? I, I assume that the water mains themselves that obviously already exist with the existing pumping station, it would be quite a job if the new pumping station was sort of shifted too much in one direction or another, because you'd have to then adjust the water mains to make the connections. And you know, that, that would uh, seem to be a substantial probably increase in cost. That's correct. That was, we, we had that early in the discussion as to the siting, whether or not we could manipulate the, the location um, for or aft. Uh, and that, that was one of the large constraints was the existing infrastructure itself. Anyone else? Lynn, are we making a recommendation on this tonight or is this also going to be continued? Um, staff suggestion would be um, to make the recommendation on this next month because um, you know, this is a regular meeting and you could take a vote on it because there's no public participation anticipated. Um, you're, you're going to hold open the, the public hearing for it and it should happen at the same time. Okay. so. Um, we will continue this to next month when we hopefully make a decision on the special permit application as well. Thank you. Yeah, Madam Chair, I just have one quick question. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Bash. Um, hey, Tiger. Um, so in terms of the, the sound concerns on an ongoing basis coming from this pumping station, um, since it sounds like this is, uh, is going to be closer to this, at least Mr. Ritz, and it sounds like at least one other resident than where the existing pumping station is. And as you mentioned, it's above ground instead of underground. What are your concerns about any type of quality of life being compromised from you know, ongoing or ambient noise um, from this pumping station to those uh, uh, neighbors that are, it sounds like they're east of the, the, this new proposed station? This isn't the only pump station we have in town. Um, we have three sewer pump stations in town and then Aquarium does have an additional pump station, um, well, actually several in town as well. The, uh, and given the fact that the, the generator would only be running either uh, went due, due to loss of power, which uh, at that point in time, any street in town has got a generator running, most of them outside uh, and um, basically undiluted, so to speak, or, or unlimited. Um, this one is inside. They placed it to the north of the structure. It was originally outside. Uh, we asked for it to be inside, so it would be part of the inside of the structure. So that actually somewhat increased the footprint of the building. Um, but we felt that we didn't want to have the accessory uh, structure outside, and we wanted to try to mitigate the noise or any noise there might be. Um, I think Aquarians done a nice job trying to accommodate all of the town's concerns. Um, giving us a structure that was more in keeping with the character of the town, things of that nature, the fencing, things of that nature as well. I think that um, they've done their best to try to mitigate it. And we can certainly um, give them a little, couple of more parameters as far as what the decibel level would be at the, at the property line, um, what would be permitted. And then uh, we can then go out there and um, test it and make sure that it is satisfactory. And if not, you can, uh, you can ask for some additional sound panels to be placed in and around that, uh, inside that one, room itself to uh, kind of help uh, deaden the noise some more. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, so then let's move on to item number six on the agenda, 78 Main Street. Upon application of ELD Properties LLC owner and Mary Thornton contact Ben D for a site plan approval for a personal service establishment in the retail A zone at 78 Main Street. Do we have somebody here to speak on this application for a site? Yes, um, this is Mary. I'm showing up under Brian Murphy, my husband. 
Hi, everyone. Hello. Let me just start my video. Hi there. Um, my name is Mary Thornton. I'm a physician assistant, and um, this is my first time uh, starting a business or in a, one of these sort of meetings. So um, thanks for having me. And um, so my, my proposed business plan um, is a personal service establishment, more specifically an aesthetics business offering services such as Botox, filler, facials. Um, and um, I'm looking to open in 80 Main, um, 78 Main um, technically, but the building says 80, so it's on the third floor, unit two. Um, and um, so I'm, I'm looking to open in that space and uh, I had submitted the architectural plans. Um, basically we would be adding walls to create three rooms and um, we would be adding three sinks to go in e each of those rooms. So essentially, um, okay, just checking to see if I was on mute, sorry. Um, uh, so basically this applicant is here because at the end of the day, the, the unit was um, operated by a um, retail establishment prior to um, their um, being coming the tenant. So they are, uh, it's a change of use essentially. And that's the reason why they came back. Typically um, we would bring back personal service establishments when they come on the first floor. So this tenant doesn't have some of the same issues that a first floor personal service establishment would because they're located on the upper level. Um, but it is a change in use from the previous retail tenant. I can bring up the plan if you give me one second. So um, this is the, they have a, the existing plan is just an open space. Um, and they are proposing to add um, treatment rooms and a waiting area. Um, again, it's, it's located on the third floor, so they don't have some of the same requirements that a first floor personal service tenant would have. Commissioners, questions? Yeah, hi, it's Kent Turner. Um, I don't see any uh, elevators. Uh, do they exist or? The building does not have elevators. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah, I think that my business is well suited with the other establishments in the building um, because they also are personal service establishments. There's a salon um, across the hall for me. And then there's a, um, like an infrared sauna and a nail salon on the bottom floor. So, um, you know, I think all of those, those, all of our businesses are, are fairly cohesive. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to, you know, be, be opening hopefully in, in New Canaan. It's, I think we it's Kent, Kent Turner again. I'm sorry. Um, if I could just make a recommendation, um, you might talk to your architect and just ask him the question about uh, ADA requirements. Yes. And mm -hmm. make sure that, um, <clears throat> you know, you uh, it's been looked into and uh, you're comfortable with the way uh, <clears throat> that there's no elevator. Yes, um, definitely. And I will, I will definitely look into the ADA requirements. Um, you know, I, I believe that um, my, my type of business isn't, you know, it's not considered medical. Um, I'm not, you know, writing prescriptions, treating ill people, um, you know, there's no insurance coverage or anything like that for the services that I provide. But nonetheless, um, I will, 
look into that to make sure that I'm ADA compliant. Thank you. And I'm sorry, um, do you know how many square feet the uh, yeah. floor? Yes, it's um, 1,822 square feet. Okay. So you're, as long as you're under 3,000 square feet a floor and you're under, uh, you're not over two stories, uh, you, I, I don't think you are required to have an elevator. But just, um, just as a recommendation, just have that double checked. Okay, will do. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ward, did you have a question? Well, I was just going to say that uh, we certainly want to encourage uh, small business development in uh, the town of New Canaan. And as you uh, pointed out at the beginning, that this is because it's a change in use, but it's a it's a use that is not more uh, a threat to health or uh, safety than the use that was previously in that location. So it seemed like a perfectly appropriate thing to do. Thank you. Mr. Chris, do you have a question? The question was similar to Mr. Turner's as to do with the uh, toilet facility and whether that would be handicapped accessible and have railing for around the toilet and so forth, which you see in many toilets these days. Yes, I will have railing around the toilet. Um, the sink currently, I don't believe is ADA compliant. So that's something that I'm already um, going to be switching out. Um, and we'll make sure that there's, you know, enough way in the hall, uh, enough space in the hallways, um, you know, to meet the, the code requirements. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Are we good commissioners? So then we, we can take a vote on this one tonight, or should we keep this open too? Lynn, you're on mute. Lynn, you're on mute. Great. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yes, you can totally take a vote on this one. There's no expectation that a member of the public would have come. It's not a public hearing. It wasn't open um, for the public to speak on it, just to watch. Okay. So do we have a motion? I'll, I'll move to uh, approve. Second. The reason, you know, reason is that the, the change in use is really not, not dramatic and it's, uh, seem, it would seem quite appropriate for the town. Any further comments? Okay, then I will call the vote. Uh, Mr. Chris? Yes. Uh, Ms. Tiscornia? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Mr. Ward? Yes. Uh, Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Cassavant? Yes. Mr. Bash? Yes. And I'm also voting yes, so that's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is 13 South Avenue upon application of South Avenue property LLC owner and Yazan Mustafa contract vendee for a site plan approval for a cigar retail cigar slash tobacco shop in the retail A zone at 13 South Avenue. Do we have anybody here to speak to this? Uh, uh, do we have an applicant to speak to this application this evening? Yes, Mr. Um, Yazan is on as well. I see him. Uh, sorry, um, Leif is here. Am I on mute? No, you're no. not on mute. He is on mute. So I don't see that I want to speak. Um, so this application um, came in and I just want to bring up, if you'll just give me one second, I just want to bring up the, uh, so originally, so this application was submitted um, originally, I don't know if any of you went to see it, um, and it was, uh, it, it was missing um, a bunch of information, including a site plan. And um, today 
they submitted an actual site plan. Um, it, it's a partial, it was a partially completed application. Um, it's for a retail cigar tobacco shop and it could be for retail. Originally staff's recommendation would have been to ask the um, commission to consider denying it because the application was submitted incomplete. Um, today they've since completed some of the blanks, the blank parts of the application. Um, they have told us nothing except that they plan to open a cigar tobacco shop, which would be a retail establishment um, and would work in the zone under a site plan approval. Um, their site plan, however, was um, submitted today. Um, so this, this would be up to the discretion of the um, commission. Um, staff originally was gonna recommend a denial based on an incomplete application, but um, this would be up to staff. We have 65 days on a site plan. Um, so you can carry this over to next month if there is um, additional questions because the next month's meeting is on the 16th of November. Um, but that that is um, where it stands right now. Okay, so just so I'm clear, do we have anybody, to, is the applicant present to walk us through this or all we have is what we see in front of us? Um, there is a gentleman, Leith, who is on the, the uh, who is on, I don't know if he's behind, he's there, but his, um, he's the one who is the applicant. Um, that is, hold on a second, let's see. He's not responding to requests to speak. Okay. So I don't think we, even though um, it appears he's here, he might not be here. <laughs> so essentially, we just have the site plan that was submitted today. Okay, so I guess our options are to either consider what's in front of us and, you know, approve or deny or continue this and see if somebody wants to show up next month to talk about it. Yes, that would be the, uh, yes, essentially. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, it's Kent Turner. I am. Um recommend that we continue this and um, ask for a, a little more clarification on the drawings. Uh, there, there are no dimensions. Um, it, it appears that uh, there's no uh, wheelchair access. Uh, uh, that, although the bathroom would, would, looks like it conforms to ADA, but um, I think we need more information um, as to um, the size and you know the uh, path of travel. The um, the exit, uh, which is on the towards the bottom of the page where the stair is, um, certainly isn't um, code conforming. Um, so there's some real, you know, what I see are some ADA and, and building code issues. But uh, uh, perhaps if it's continued, this person can um, provide additional information for us. Okay. Any other thoughts? All right, well then I guess we can continue it to next month. And Lynn, can you try and get in touch with the applicant to see if they, number one, can attend the meeting and number two, provide some of the additional information that Mr. Turner has requested so that we have a complete application to consider? Um, we'll, we'll do, um, we'll reach out to them. Okay. Um, all right. So then item eight is deliberation of any action closed on the public hearing item, which we did not close anything. So that one is quick. Um, number nine is the planning subcommittee update. Um, as the chair of the planning subcommittee, I have nothing to update on you on this evening. <laughs> so that one is quick. Um, so number 10, um, administrative actions or other matters. Um, and do you want to just give us a little overview of the sustainability, sustainability code adjustments you put on here for discussion? I, I know that we're missing some people that wanted to talk about this, but. Sure. Um, maybe we'll add this to the uh, November agenda. Um, Mr. Herring um, had brought to, the, to our attention that he, he wanted to have a discussion about some um, sustainability adjustments. He wanted to also, he wanted to talk about um, 
in infrastructure and uh, possibly considering adding it to um, the regulations um, and uh, just some general sustainability um, information. Uh, if any, we can, we can bring this to discussion next month. I think it's probably more appropriate. Okay, Mr. Bash, did you have something you wanna ask or share though? Yeah, no, I, I just, um, it was something that was, I brought up briefly um, in our last meeting. Uh, I don't know what the right forum is um, for discussing this, but I think at some point that it would be good if the commission could uh, discuss whether um, any of the ARPA funds, which my understanding is you know, around $6 million from ARPA that's gonna go to the town, whether this commission feels that um, any of those funds should be used for things like for affordable housing fund. My, my sense is it's relatively flexible from what I've heard so far and how those ARPA funds could be used. And I wouldn't want the opportunity to go by if we want to put in a formal request or whatever the process is to potentially use ARPA funds for um, a designated purpose that this commission potentially sees fit. Okay. Um... Then I don't I don't know the process for that either. I, I guess maybe you could get back to us next month about how the town is allocating the ARPA funds. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know um, whether that would be appropriate for the commission to make a determination on. Um, right. I mean, I don't I don't think we're not looking to approve it. I think the question is, is there any input being requested of us? I'm guessing since we haven't yeah. been requested for any that there isn't, but um, just confirm. My, my um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, I can look into it, but uh, my, 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 we, there is no input that we've been asked for yet. Correct. Okay. Uh, I, I will point out that the Board of Finance reported that $400,000 of the ARPA money were being allocated to employees of, of um, the school system. So yeah. th there would clearly be some use of ARPA funds anticipated. Um, that was in the minutes of the last um, or prior Board of Finance Committee meeting. So I think it would be quite helpful, Lynn, if you could in fact determine if there is some process in place that we could request funding. And okay. I presume that the Board of Finance would be the place that might have the answer to that question. I will investigate and get back to you next month. Thank you. Okay, and um, yes, I think we should continue the conversation about sustainability code adjustments to next month and possibly um, it's, it might have an appropriate home in the in the planning subcommittee. I just didn't have mm -hmm. like three minutes. a chance to, um, yeah. to work on that this month. So, um, but if you guys have thoughts about it, Mr. Chris, I see your hand. Um, you know, let's let's figure out the right venue for this conversation because I think there are some people with strong feelings, Mr. Chris. Yeah. I think on, on some sustainability, um, some of my personal bugaboos. I know the uh, plan and cons our, our zoning rules talk about um, native plantings that might be able to be tightened up and firmed. Uh, also, issues and whether we should perhaps revisit uh, some of the rules we have regarding um, geothermal and uh, wind power uh, and uh, and solar in order to make it easier for people to do it uh, within reason. Uh, my understanding is that there are a few small, I'm going to call them wind turbines and houses in the, in the town. They tend to fall into other regulations. We may want to think explicitly regarding this, um, which it seems to be falling under other stuff and we can maybe make it easier for people to use renewable energy it might be a useful thing to do for town. Um, as well as uh, issues of um, uh, building code and our own, our own views on uh, sustainable materials to be used uh, in various building projects. I think these are all very useful things for this commission to think about. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, um, next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Um, first, we have the September 20th, 2021 special meeting. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll, I'll move. Sorry, it's Commissioner Cassavant. Yes, thank you. Second? I'll no, second. Chris, seconds. Oh. 
Okay. Lynn, remind me, do I have to go through a roll call on this or are we? Yeah, but which second do you want to take Claire's or John Chris's? Oh, I think, I had Chris. I think Claire heard first, spoke oh. first. All right, we're letting Claire have it then. Okay. Um, did, you have to, did you have to do a roll call? Roll okay. call. Sorry, it's late. Uh, Mr. Chris, um, what's your vote? Yes, approve. Ms. Tiscornia? Approve. Mr. Turner? Approve. Mr. Ward? Approve. Mr. Williams? Approve. Mr. Cassavant? Approve. Mr. Bash? Approve. And Ms. Nielsen? Approved. Uh, the second uh, meeting minutes are the September 28th regular meeting minutes. Um, do we have a motion on that one? Motion approve. All right, Mr. Bash, second. Anybody? I'll second. All right, seconded by Mr. Ward. Uh, Mr. Chris? Uh, yes, approve. Uh, Ms. Tiscornia? Approve. Mr. Turner? Approve. Mr. But for Ward? The, uh, excuse, me, okay. excuse me, for the record, um, I was not at the hearing, but I did see the uh, video or the tape on it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ward? Approve. Mr. Williams? Approve. And uh, I was did not attend the meeting either, but I did see the tape of it, so I approve. Mr. Cassavant? Approve. Mr. Bash? Approve. And Ms. Nielsen? Approve. Okay, that's everything on the agenda, so we can adjourn. Have a good night. All right. Night, night everybody. Night. And night. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Good See you in two weeks. <laughs>